All right, quiet on the set. Hi, I'm Leroy Price. I want to talk a little bit about knife mechanisms, particularly in this video about how they fail. This complements a book I wrote. So I want to go over some of the things we did. It's sort of a fun thing to uh, look at, uh, just looking at knife mechanisms from a different aspect. So let's take a look at the pictures and see if we have some fun with it. This is a standard liner lock. I'm, I think it's a um, assisted opener, but the concept is all the same. We broke this both ways. First, we broke it um, down the conventional way with uh, a weight on the end, and then we broke it back to see what would happen. And this one is a, a thumb stud uh, used for a stop pin. And we found out that the, uh, when the th thumb stud is used as a stop pin, they are much stronger than the conventional type where they just put a stop pin behind the blade. Well, no, wait a minute. Now this has got a stop pin. Okay, it's got a stop pin hole here. So I take that back. This is a, a, a conventional stop pin, but not using the uh, thumb stud for stop pin. I guess, I guess it fell out. Anyway, this is in a book, of course. What you note is that when it when it is broken in this conventional down way, that the liner spring has gotten pushed over. It's actually kind of bent and slipped by, and that's how the knife failed in uh, in the, in this way. Okay, when we broke it back the other way, the the stop pin broke. It popped out. Uh, you, correction. The, the pivot pin screw popped out and that's missing. So that's how that broke. So this is standard liner lock mechanism. Now for a frame lock, what we did was we, we broke them in the standard way and when we broke them down, how they failed was like with this one, they have this thin area to allow the more flexibility for this thin uh, lock bar arrangement and this is where it buckled out but again the the lock went inward now I've seen these things fail where they slip out and the blade could come down and cut your hand but in, in the, all the ones we tested the lock went in and since I couldn't see exactly what was happening first. I didn't know if this bent first and this went in or this went in and this bent first. So instead of doing a, a qualitative test, this one broke at 60 pounds uh, on its end. Put the, right about here is where, the, where we placed the weight. Uh, I went ahead and just did a qualitative test where I put a pipe on it and just cranked on it to see what would happen. So I kept an eye on it and it did. It actually went in and went all the way to the other uh, liner so that confirmed what was happening. This, this would go in, now if I kept on cranking it then this would have bent out like this and caused the lock to fail. So this didn't fail. Now this could be uh, bent back and uh, turned into a useful knife. I just want to say these are these kind of look like they're titanium, but it's probably uh, regular steel or 400 series steel because uh, the magnet uh, sticks to it. So that this is assisted opener. So this is still a functioning knife, although it's been kind of screwed up here. Yeah, so that's still a functioning knife. This one, this one could be bent so it'll close. But by the way, this is still this is still a useful tool. It's it's basically kind of a friction folder now, but it is still a very useful tool. You just have to be careful that uh, once you get it open, well, this is this is probably not going to get closed unless you do a little bit of manipulation to the spring. But 
this is still a very useful tool. It could uh, it could be used to cut. We also did some uh, messing around uh, with breaking the right to left, and all that showed was uh, if you if you uh, apply stress laterally, that the blade breaks, and it breaks through the a thumb bob hole, pretty much suspected. So this one broke at 52 pounds, uh, as opposed to 184 pounds in conventional way. It's interesting that this one broke with the uh, pivot screw, and that destroyed it. I guess this was breaking it upward. This was breaking it. Uh, upward as, as opposed to the conventional downward breaking and a respectable 184 pounds and this one uh, this one just coming down we didn't break it the up way we broke the conventional pushing it down uh, 60 pounds these are a couple of uh, Italian type stilettos they're not high quality, they're made in China. But the idea was to do a brake test on them and see what failed. This one, we um, pushed back, so the, the, the force of pushing this way, and wanted to see what failed. Uh, this is not exactly very high quality spring steel. The thing did function fairly well as a switchblade before but you can see the result how uh, a little bit of weight uh, made this one fail now this one we were we were uh, pushing down in sort of the conventional way that a lot of knives were tested but this one kept slipping out of this uh, notch with a mere uh, five or ten pounds so the um, the test seemed kind of uh, useless. It wasn't very much fun. I wanted to see if we could screw the sucker up. So I put a C-clamp on here so it would not slip out of the notch. And then we really started to pour the weight on. And it took a quite a bit more weight. But uh, you can see by the time this finally slipped out of uh, this notch, it deformed uh, this liner and somewhat uh, this liner so not too much strength in, uh, in one of these push button automatics that are constructed this way these are these are assassin killing instruments they're not very good for uh, a combat situation Okay, failure on these uh, lockbacks was kind of interesting. This one broke at a measly uh, 60 pounds, uh, bending it down, uh, but went to 220 pounds coming up. When it broke with the, with the downward bend, what happened was that this spring, um, I'm sorry, lock bar, uh, bent up and it slipped out of the notch in the back of the tang. This is a uh, perhaps a better example where you can see that this is supposed to be straight but it's got to bend up and that's how this one failed uh, when we bend it back the other way the uh, pivot pin sheared off so that's gone this on the other hand when we bend back the other way the pivot pin for the lock bar sheared off and it just it just uh, pushed it back this way and it failed that way so some inter interesting stuff uh, seeing how these uh, lockbacks failed and uh, here's another uh, lockback and it's very obvious how this one failed the uh, back of the lock bar got bent up and once that bent up the uh, latch came out of the notch and uh, yeah, it it failed that way. 
I talk about some uh, other stuff in the book, like some of the stuff I was working on, these uh, uh, push-button uh, automatics. And uh, we talk about this one here, which is kind of a really neat mechanism. It's, it's uh, such a cheap knife. This is a piece of uh, plastic that works as the spring for this uh, lock bar. It also functions as a backspacer and a lanyard hole. And uh, it works. It's not, it doesn't work very well, but it does function. So there's a lot of cheap ways to make a knife. And uh, this one here is a spring assist. We never did get to this one. This is going to be in the next book. We'll talk about more stuff like that. I've got spring assist in the book, but I just didn't get a picture of this one. I kind of ran out of uh, time. But a lot of neat stuff. Okay, this is a conventional button lock automatic. Here's the stacked coiled torsion spring. You've got the, the tail and the head of the spring. The tail fits into the uh, liner or handle pretty typically and uh, this fits into a hole in the blade and it provides the rotational torque to open the knife. Um, this looks like it's uh, sort of uh, carbon or G10, but actually it's just a coated aluminum. And you can see how the uh, mechanism is configured. The spring coming here. Here's the uh, slot for the tail. The uh, recess cutout for the button. Here's a button through hole. And not unexpectedly, when we uh, torqued down, when we, when we pushed down on the end, what failed was the button. And I refer to this as the uh, hat and cup, brim of the hat and the stem. I use this terminology to Mel Pardue and he didn't win. See, like, yeah, okay. So, uh, he might use some different terminology, but he didn't uh, laugh me out of the uh, classroom. So, uh, obviously the thin part is where the button failed. And once this bent, the blade could slip by the button and the knife uh, come down. So that's where it failed. Here's the spring that goes with it. And uh, stop pin. So nothing unexpected there. The, the thing that was unexpected was it went to 100 pounds. I thought that was quite respectable. That really surprised me. I would have never thought that it would take 100 pounds to break this uh, cheap little button lock. And my remark uh, for that was that if uh, someone to make a uh, stiffer button, like uh, probably has been put in that uh, Spyderco Coast Guard knife, I think they would have a fairly reliable uh, knife. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. These pictures complement this book that I wrote. It's called Knife Mechanisms Just for the Fun of It. And there is this knife testing in there. But the main thing about the book is knife mechanisms. We're just talking about mechanisms, how they, how they function, some of the theory, some of the physics, a little bit of BS. We've got some bio in there from uh, a couple of knife makers. Uh, for the ladies, it's going to be a great gift for Christmas, but that, you know, it's uh, sold in a lot of places. But the most important thing is, see if you like it. It's, the book is not for everybody. There's a free PDF download at a website called knifemechanisms.com. Knifemechanisms.com. Anyway, I don't know if you see that. So go there. You can download it. Uh, uh, one chapter is about 35, 40 pages. It uh, can be viewed in your computer. It's the assisted opening chapter, which is probably the best chapter. If you like this, you're, you're going to like the book. So enjoy the PDF and uh, look around. You can, you can find this book in a lot of places. Uh, thanks.